Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as I said in the last episode that uh, talking to Ambassador Riaz Koker, you know, uh, you never get your film. You have to, you know, you need hours to talk to him. And uh, in the last episode, we discussed about uh, Pakistan's foreign policy, uh, how the foreign policy, uh, foreign uh, uh, service has evolved. We talked about how our relationship and the challenges we faced in our, our relationship with our neighbors. And uh, we focused on India. Picking up from that, again, sir, again, India is still uh, very much there. What do you think that what is likely to happen in future with regard to India? Because uh, keeping in mind that what action they took last year on 5th of August, and uh, now that we have Hindutva dispensation in India, and they have uh, it ap and now apparently it looks that they have a very clear mind what they are going to do in that context they want to change the demography of uh, occupied jammu and kashmir how you see how it is going to unfold very good question uh, the way i see it if this government lasts and uh, my you own mean, uh, Modi's. Modi's government. <clears throat> my own feeling that he will continue. And if not him, then uh, either Amit Shah or that man who keeps a monkey in his lap. Uh, yeah. I forget his name. Uh, or some, but BJP, whatever it has done, has done basically on instructions of RSS. We should be very clear about it. RSS is now is a huge organization, six million members, and they have branches everywhere. Uh, they have taken they have taken a decision on what they call the final solution. They cannot reverse it. And good it's, or bad. Good or bad. It's a bad decision, but they don't care a damn. They don't care a damn about the constitution. They don't care a damn about uh, other political parties. They don't care a damn about the UN resolutions or Simla, or etc, etc. They have done it. And it's a decision which is popular, which we must understand. Please don't forget India's population, 83%, 82% or 83% is Hindu. Among the Hindus, it is a very popular decision. It may not be a, it cannot be a popular decision with the Muslims or maybe others or what we call, you know, the secular element, secular forces, uh, civil society. They don't get a damn about these things. That's his attitude. I've done it, I've done it. So I don't see things reversing. And even the, by the way, the political parties. Congress, they have made some noises, they made some statements, etc. But in their heart, they say, yeah, he's done all the dirty work. Nobody will reverse it. Correct. Nobody will reverse it. That's uh, my and that brings me to, I mean, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I should have introduced uh, my new panel uh, earlier, but, uh, well, it's uh, always to correct your mistake. Now, we have new panel. Earlier we had Ambassador Imran Yawar and Ambassador Tariq Zamir. Now we have new panel with Ambassador Tanmir Khaskhaili and Ambassador uh, uh, Riaz Bukhari. They are my batchmates, they are dear friends. Now I open the floor to my batchmates. Then we're with you. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for coming to the Ambassador's Lounge. You're welcome. Uh, basically, uh, I think much has been discussed on different topics. What I wanted to ask you, I'm sure you must be aware about it, the, 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 the very hot topic which is going on in Pakistan is the making Gilgit Baltistan as the fifth province of Pakistan. Uh, there have been talks in the media, uh, political leadership meeting, the military leadership and all, and uh, national security advisor also, his name is also coming into it. So how do you see this, uh, this move or whatever is the plan? And also, 
the elections are going to be held also on the orders of the Supreme Court before uh, the other things happen. Uh, if you make comparison what India has done in Kashmir and what we are going to be doing, how, where does our stand on Kashmir, will it affect it based on the Security Court resolutions, Shimla Agreement or any of those? Uh, will it make any difference? Uh, you know, I don't have any inside information on what's happening in the government. But my own personal view is uh, that uh, it's, uh, it's necessary, imperative, that we uh, do give the people of uh, Gilgit, uh, Baltistan, uh, all the rights that other provinces of Pakistan. But these are on provisional basis. The word provisional is important in whatever act, etc. that they may be considering. Plus, I think we, we can also, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not a lawyer or not an expert on it, but maybe we can also s say something to this effect, that without preju prejudice to the recognized position of A, B, C, D, without me, because, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say if there is a final settlement, then perhaps it is up to um, the United Nations, to, uh, whether it wishes to hold a plebiscite, uh, uh, however it is to be done. <coughs> so, uh, uh, the point, here the main point that people have to understand is India has rejected everything. Resolutions, their own constitutional position, the, in, the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir, and the two are not com comparable. And including in, Shimla agreement. Uh, including Shimla agreement, Lahore, every, every agreement that you can think of. In fact, in my opinion, there is no such thing as an LRC. It's only a line of fire at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Only a line of fire. And India will progressively find opportunities to change the line. You know, when they went into Siachen, they, the violate, they are the first to violate, uh, violate yeah, the, yeah. then of course we… So are we in a state of war, if I can uh, say that? V I would say we are already uh, in the middle of a war. War in the sense that, of course, the LOC is on fire. The statements. Uh, uh, statements, uh, vicious, uh, threatening statements are coming out of Delhi. They are even talking about nuclear weapons and uh, all sorts of things. Uh, so th that thing is on. And also, it also depends on how the internal situation in, in uh, Indian uh, occupied Kashmir uh, evolves. People hate India. If you have heard the recent interview of Farooq Abdullah, who I don't have much respect for, uh, he, now he is, he is being very stupid when he says that people of Jammu and Kashmir want to join China. We we'll love, I mean, love to work and, uh, <laughs> and not Pakistan. He never, he never mentioned Pakistan because no, he said not Pakistan, but China. 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 I mean, that, but that, he's a hypocrite, don't you think? He, he's a hypocrite. His father uh, made a fundamental mistake. I don't want to say more about it. But, but you know, his father's grave is being… Uh, oh, I, I don't want I to know. say why it is no, being… No, but protected. that's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Uh, and actually why it is protected, I cannot say on TV. But uh, it's a fact that this is not a family that's respected. But they're here… These are uh, what you call uh, turncoats. Right. They, uh, they will, if tomorrow power is offered to them in some shape or the other with the, some kind of euphemism about uh, Kashmir being uh, a state or whatever it is, these guys will go back. So, but there is universal hatred for India. There is m uh, massive alienation. And then now you can use, see the words that Farooq Abdullah has used. Yeah, it is. And, and, and as Asif was saying, so just to continue, because the, talking of uh, the state of war, the Indian military leadership, they're just saying they've been the political leadership tells us we are ready to take over Gilgit Baltistan or Pakistan occupied Kashmir. So they are, we are. Do you think it's a cakewalk? No, it's not. But let them, they're very uh, much. Uh, I, I think we are, we are following a sensible policy that we are not uh, reacting. being provocative or we are not. No, it's actually a trap. They are trying to set a trap for you. They are creating all this situation so that you escalate. The hype. You, that Pakistan should escalate. And once, the, once Pakistan escalates, then of course it's open season. 
and they can always blame Pakistan, that Pakistan has done this and we were being restrained and now this has happened. Yeah. I, I think this is the way you should look at it. And the other thing is that uh, I, I'm very clear in my mind. We have to support the movement. I was asked this question and some people were a little unhappy, but I say it again because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a senior citizen. I have served this country. I say this with a great sense of responsibility and with my hand on my heart that we should now think in terms of full spectrum support. Sir, you are making a very serious Very statement. serious. No, I mean it. Because the, the, the formulation we have, uh, legal, political, diplomatic support, Moral, political and diplomatic. Yeah, I, I can't remember when it was coined. But it, is as, it does not resonate anymore in, the, in Kashmir with the people. The present people want to know what is Pakistan's Don't real people. position. That's, that's so that responsibility, in my judgment, rests on the government, on the leadership, the entire the country's leadership, and of course, the institutions. So we should not... Uh, you know, uh, we, we've talked about Kashmir because we have advocated this case for 70 years. We cannot give up, we can give up our right, but, but we have no right to, to give, give up the, the right of the Kashmiris. Business. That's what I want to say. Riyaz, thank you. Thank you, you have Asif. To say something. Thank you. Sir, we have talked uh, a bit about India, Kashmir. The library. Are now we talk something about Middle East. Lot is happening over there. The old guard is giving way to the new one. The younger leaders are emerging. From Libya up to Oman, there is a change, big change of leadership. And we find that leadership a little bit, you know, deviating from the traditional friendly relations with Pakistan. Now, Israel is also coming into that region, and they are already in the Gulf. Now we see, you know, problems of Saudi Arabia with Turkey, with Iran. How, how do we formulate our policy to maintain relationship, our traditional relationship, with our traditional best friends in the Gulf? I am not a Middle East expert, but uh, I have an opinion. First of all, as you know, the Islamic world uh, is uh, 1.8 billion people, and um, the Arab population is uh, at the most 400 million. So the Islamic world, the bulk of the Islamic world is non-Arab. But the Arab countries had influence because they were well endowed, they were rich, uh, the Almighty was very, uh, shall we say, uh, generous with them. Uh, therefore, it was their influence and that influence is now waning. What has happened is the United States has devastated the Middle East. This is by design. Iraq was destroyed, Syria has been destroyed, Libya has been destroyed. These were the sort of so-called frontline states. Now, as far as these countries are concerned, uh, with all due respects, I have no, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've had the pleasure of visiting. I know a lot of people there also. But these countries are now losing their influence. Just if you go by the remarks of President Trump, what he said about uh, the crown prince, yes. what he had earlier said about the, okay. about the king, that he can get rid of them in one week or something weeks, to that yeah. effect. Uh, so, in fact, these countries have now become like principalities. Uh, they, they have, first of all, they have lost a lot of influence in terms of money. Saudi Arabia will always be respected because it's a country that all Muslims all over the world look at. But that's for the, of the holy, places. holy places. So, uh, the way it has happened is unfortunate. Um, of course, they have their own interests and Saudi Arabia, of course, uh, sells a lot of oil to India. India is a big country. It's a very big market for them. 
Now they have invested a lot of money there, they have uh, other interests. Uh, so I think we unfortunately uh, have uh, been at fault. When you are a supplicant, when you are asking for money and support all the time, then you do not enjoy the same level of respect. Uh, that's what's happened in this situation. Uh, I know that these are these are one these are, these, these countries had great leaders like Faisal and uh, King uh, Khalid and King Fahd. Uh, uh, and, uh, no, and, 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 and King Abdullah and Sheikh Zayed bin Sul. These are, they were great, great leaders. Uh, and they had genuine love for Pakistan. I hope it doesn't change. And I would also say that perhaps uh, uh, some, uh, some odd statement made by, Pak by, by some responsible people here also have added to this. Now, in regard to uh, uh, their relationship with uh, Israel, believe me, all of them have had contacts with them. I can tell you my own experience. My very first call was on an important Arab, I don't want to name the country, Arab uh, ambassador in Washington who was there for donkey's years. He told me, you people are very silly, very stupid. You should have relations with Israel. Israel. Contacts. And as a result, we did have contacts. I was in contact with their ambassador in Washington. As foreign secretary, I met my counterpart three or four times in New York. Uh, uh, Isn't it a revelation? <laughs> no, it it's not a revelation. I've said it before. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, the, it's the interesting thing is, basically, there are three factors. One, we assured the Israelis that we do not consider them enemies. We have a difference of opinion on a principle, which is the principle of self-determination, because that is also very dear to us and it applies to Kashmir. So that's point number one. Point number two, uh, uh, um, you know, our nuclear program is India specific. Correct. So please don't have any, no. uh, uh, whether it's any apprehensions on, uh, that. apprehensions on that score. And thirdly, because of our position and we've, uh, we have been supporting Palestine before independence, by the way. You know that Kaji Azam yeah. made statements, yes. uh, law good. resolution, my resolution passed yeah. and, uh, and there were other resolutions also and his statements. So we have, a, we have a commitment. Now we will not be in the first half, we may be in the second half, in the second half half. But sir, uh, I remember well, one of the Israeli uh, diplomats telling me in New York that look, uh, it is not the Middle East, we look towards Pakistan. If you recognize us, then the overwhelming majority of the Muslim world is going to recognize us, including the Far East, yeah. where you have Indonesia, Malaysia, yes. and other uh, countries, and including African countries. No, I, I, I won't share that. I think, you know, these are very big countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, they have their own population-wise. You know, oh, oh. The, the Arabs are 400 million. Overall, 1.8 billion Muslims. Yeah, yeah. So, 400 million versus 1. Point, uh, another 1.4 billion. You see, you, we, we also have to look at this this way. Okay, what will the ben benefit be? I would say it's marginal because look, don't forget, India and Israel have a very deep relationship. There is a new axis now: United States, India, Israel, Israel. and United States because it's sort of scaled off in, in, uh, in the Middle East, United States has appointed, in my opinion, now this is not a reflection of any government view, has appointed Israel as the IG, Inspector General for the Middle East. And the relationship they've set up with Bahrain and with UAE is a multiplier for Israel. It's a forward base. And so the target, Israel is the policeman. The target is none of these countries. The target is Iran. Yeah. 
सो ये हमारे जेन में रखना चाहिए एंड ऑल्सो आई एम श्योर आवर वी हैव ग्रेट थिंक टैंक एक्सपर्ट्स नाउ हुर एडवाइजिंग द कंट्री आई होप दे ऑल्सो रियलाइज दैट दिस वी मे ऑल्सो बी इन इन द क्रॉस हेयर एट सम स्टेज करेक्ट Sir, uh, this brings me to uh, another very important issue. Now, uh, intra-Afghan dialogue is taking place, and Afghanistan is second front for us. After India, we have suffered more uh, due to Afghanistan's problem than India in terms of uh, blood and treasure. Now, uh, there is a hope, a glimmer of hope, but at the same time. uh we cannot ignore the spoilers role which india is likely to play how you see the situation unfolding well you know i i i i hesitated to speak in the presence of an expert uh but but you know i'm not an uh, afghan expert myself i really have spent very little time on it but i have a view which is very simple uh i i i'm not sure i see peace breaking out in afghanistan in the near future i think what is happening is under pressure at the moment you know us elections and whatever has happened in in the middle east is also under us pressure yeah. because uh, united states twisted their tail or arm or whatever you word you want to use but the main main point is that uh, uh, talks are being held and taliban are very smart negotiators as i'm sure you know that better than i do i, I i've only Never They are really. famous saying that Americans may have watches, but we have time. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, Afghanistan will settle down only the way they have always settled down internally. Uh, peace made in Washington or Islamabad or Delhi or Moscow or Peking is not going to work. I mean, that's my reading of the situation. And as I said earlier, this mosaic, which has actually uh, there is a there is a there, there are cracks in the mosaic. unless these cracks come together and there is an acceptability of uh, uh, internal acceptability uh, i i don't see things uh, happening sir so what is as your pakistan advice pakistan policy yeah pakistan has done the best it could i mean whatever the past i don't want to go into that but what i'm saying is keep your nose clean don't interfere don't mess around and leave it to the afghans to sort it don't play that's, favorites that's yeah don't play favorites so that that would be certainly my 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 advice and we've done our best we brought uh the taliban and the united states on the same table today united states re- regards or they they haven't used the word recognize or i don't know whether they have or not but in a way there is a recognition that taliban are a party a cr- critical party but there are other the issues also the afghan government it's it's divided they have you know all kind of problem uh, uh, president ghani and abdullah mm-hmm. other than that, there are war lords there are Ethnic drug lords and uh, there are there is a new generation drug lords and new generation of people yeah. we don't know what they are thinking yes, what yes, are the yes, women yes. thinking so it's not an easy thing but uh, as a pakistani as a neighbor of uh, afghanistan and as somebody who, who has had uh, very actually limited dealings with afghanistan i really wish them well but i must tell you one thing which uh, which goes back to uh, late 70s uh in the late 70s uh bhutto visited kabul it was 76 76 uh, i think it was may or june yeah. uh, i don't remember yeah. we were, we came from tehran and then uh, sardar daud visited pakistan. pakistan yes and they were close to an understanding right and it was a very simple draft the dra- draft was basically had two elements reference to the un charter and reference to the prince five principles of peaceful coexistence uh, i i can't recall very well panchila. but i think the word panchila panchila yeah. sect that non aligned movement yeah, yeah so, you know the, i think there there is a word which is used there i think it's sacrosanct or something right. to that effect bond that borders or etc right. sector now the deal was this was the going to be the Correct. the the agreement uh, and the problem was that uh, bhutto was insisting that the nap leaders will be released after it is signed right daud was insisting that it should be signed, signed first and then they will sign 
And then, of course, May, June, and you know what happened in July, and then right. what happened to Daud himself. So it was also, I wouldn't rule out that there was... There was it some, was sir, first Bhutto went, then uh, Daud. There was a... We, 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 5th July, 77, Bhutto goes. Then uh, 27th April, no, 1978, 5th, 5th oh, July. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, the coup. Yeah, coup. Against Bhutto and then uh, against uh, Sardar Daud that on 27th April 1978. Eight, huh? That's right. So that, that's how. And Shah of Iran goes afterwards. Yeah. Because there was also a talk about a kind of, kind of a confederation between Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan. Yeah. I well, don't actually, know how far. Uh, the, the, you see, 76, there was a meeting of RCD in Ankara where uh, uh, Bhutto and uh, Shah of Iran had a kind of a 2020 match, you know, it wasn't a very friendly meeting. And then from there, uh, we went to Tehran and uh, Tehran, uh, you know, um, uh, the Turkish president said, you know, see if you can sort this out. With uh, sir, we have talked uh, about a lot of countries, but I think the most important Pakistan-US relationship. Uh, throughout our history, it has been a roller coaster ride between Pakistan. Coming straight away to the present scenario, present term, elections are going to be held in a, in a month's time, in a two months' time. What do you see, uh, Mr. Trump or no Trump? Well, I'm neither an astrologist nor a bookie. <laughs> uh, but, 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 you know, I, my, my own uh, feeling is that uh, three-fourths of the population of the world is probably praying that that Trump will not be the president. <laughs> now, if he wins... What about the American population? <laughs> America is very badly divided. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very polarized society. Uh, he's got his support of, you know, the rednecks and the evangelists and, and, and you know, the Midwest. Uh, he has committed uh, people. But I think people will also realize that so much uh, wrong has happened during his time. First of all, no clarity in policies, uh, the establishment, uh, he has taken on the establishment, the military establishment, the CIA, uh, he treats State Department like trash, the UN inter international institutions, he rubbishes, uh, you know, he has no respect for UN, walked out of so many treaties, uh, mistreated allies, abused allies, abused us. Yeah. Uh, embraced India. So, you know, all sorts of, uh, he's very chaotic. Uh, but Joe Biden will, well, of course, China factor is a very crit critical factor. in the. It's a major issue in the election at the moment. Both are trying to be more Catholic than the Pope uh, in terms of being hardline on, uh, hardliners on, 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 in, on, in, on China. So, uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to check with, with my bookie friend in London <laughs> what is happening. So, uh, I, I wouldn't want to bet on it at the yeah, moment. Yeah, he's in a way, attack you, especially on, on Pakistan, on, on Iran, the way he's going for the sanctions, it's very strange, you know, they, the whole world is on the one side in the US. Yeah, but you know, he, here, this is where he's isolated. I mean, you know, the, the Europeans are not with him. Yeah. Uh, maybe the, these Arab, uh, you know, around the leadership, uh, which he is kind of uh, sort of arm twisted, uh, because they they feel Iran is a threat, so it's better to line up with a guy who's who's willing to fix mm -hmm. Iran. Or so, do you think that uh, Arab states would survive with this uh, strategy? The conservative yeah, Arabs. I will be declared Pasol. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I will tell you some my own personal view. You know, these are view, these are whatever is happening is these are not popular based decisions. These are these people are monarchs, they are uh, sheikhs or whatever you may call them. But these are not democratic societies, or it's not sort of what people want. Nobody really knows what's happening in the Arab street. But there is already talk now of uh, what the Arab uh, what was it? No, no, you know, uh, second Arab, Arab Spring. Spring. Arab, Arab Spring. People are already talking about it. In fact, there are there is already trouble in Egypt for the last yeah. few days. There have been uh, uh, the riots and yeah. you know all sorts of uh, situations. So one doesn't know. 
I, I, I'm sure that I'm, my own feel, I won't use the word I'm sure, but I, I suspect that the people in the region do not go along with this policy. Sir, but uh, first Arab Spring brought more chaos. You think that second Arab Spring would be different? Oh, uh, again, difficult to predict or to speculate, but it can be more dangerous because, you know, these countries are now so not, are against not, as, not as rich as they were. Uh, and uh, as they say, the, the needs and the requirements and the expectations of people have grown. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this uh, COVID thing has also had its impact on... Uh, uh, and these countries are actually relying a lot on, on foreign uh, uh, labor and for, foreign expertise. You, you take Dubai, 80% uh, of the population of the city is uh, foreigners. Mm -hmm. And God forbid if some, you know, some terrorist attacks or something yes. takes place, uh, you know, it can be quite difficult. Uh, <coughs> Riyadh, yeah. you want to say? Something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, you have served both in Washington and Beijing. Uh, these days, it is said that we don't have any reliable friend in Washington. While, as far as the Beijing is concerned, it is helping us a lot economically politically, multilaterally, in the UN, bilaterally. How do you see the relationship with Washington and with Beijing? Well, you know, I mean, Pakistan and US relations have always been rocky, up and down, up and down, and you know, sometimes, uh, but there again, it's, uh, I, I'm not, I, I don't like these uh, words like uh, uh, strategic relationship and strategic partnership, these are all, I, I don't know who coined all these words for, uh, I, I've, I've never used it when I was in the U.S., by the way. Uh, and uh, during my period, uh, we were, uh, there was sort of wall-to-wall -wall sanctions on everything. Um, so we had a very difficult time. And U.S. is, uh, hi historically, and certainly our experience, hasn't been a reliable friend of Pakistan. Uh, it's actually, uh, you know, used us. Or maybe we can, they've, we've also used them, but uh, frankly, they've uh, used us uh, much more. And they, uh, they have both used us as a target, as well as, uh, as somebody they expect to deliver. Uh, now, I hope and pray that things settle in Afghanistan. But if things don't settle in Afghanistan, you should be ready that they will uh, blame, blame Pakistan and throw all the mud at us. Uh, because that, that's, a, that's a view of the think tanks and the establishment, uh, etc. cetera. So, Sir, uh, yeah. final question with regard to that is that uh, whatever you have, uh, I mean, you have ex said it and you have said it very, you know, in a, in a very frank manner. Question is, what is the lesson for us? What should we be doing? <clears throat> and this is the winding up question that you have to wind up the discussion as well. Very frankly, we have to put our house in order. That's point number one. How? Huh. Critical. Uh, politically, uh, we are being seen by the outside world as fractured. Politically. Economically, we are weak, so uh, the, 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 the road map for that is that you start working on self-reliance. Uh, you know, looking for uh, what you call a, a basket and, you know, begging for money is not a very... If you are in that, if you are going to be doing that, then you Sir, will always be in trouble. We are not begging. We are getting the loans. It's not the way, you know, dole. No, no, it may, no but it's still, you are still, you are still going with a bowl and saying we need 3 billion or we need 4 billion or we need 1 billion. And, uh, you know, when you go every day, if I come to you every day that uh, Asif, please give me uh, 10,000 rupees, uh, uh, you know, every day, one day you'll say, yeah, what's the matter with this guy, you know? <laughs> So, you know, it, uh, we have to be, what I'm saying is, no better thing than self-reliance. Right. Build your economy. 
build your and eliminate eliminate focal points of tension within the country yes. Yes. sir i i have one you know small question the day we joined the foreign service we, we joined the ministry there was a talk and senior used to tell us that there is one officer who was working with the then prime minister zulfikar ali bhutto as a minute taker and we have seen some of the document because i have suffered most of the time in south asia division recorded by documents recorded by the prime minister himself and you were his director minutes would you like to say something about you were working with the late prime minister well you know uh, i would say great great experience i learned so much from him that's one thing secondly I don't think we will. Well, certainly, uh, I cannot think of any other foreign minister who would measure up to him. I'm talking of the. I can't talk about the future. Who knows? Um, thirdly, I would say he was extremely patriotic when it came to Pakistan's national vital interests. Um, um, formidable mind, brilliant, great memory. and um, uh, deeply committed and look please do not forget his greatest contribution to this country is that he initiated the nuclear program the nuclear program is pakistan's greatest success in foreign security policy ever ever so we 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 need, we the nation owes him a gratitude i am not uh, i am not in a position to comment on his internal policies or whatever i wouldn't want to do that i see it only as a professional who has worked with him uh, uh he he uh, he has he's done he did a lot for pakistan and uh, uh, you know i think his uh, his end was tragic thank you sir and, and not only tragic but last sentence but uh, uh, totally unfair thank you sir you have said it all and uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, you have heard ambassador ras kok it was a learning for us i hope you must have also enjoyed this talk and uh, let me say it uh, in the concluding remarks that pakistan's foreign policy is a reflection of our own domestic structure how we behave how we act is going to be reflected in our actions at the international arena so i think we have to as uh, ambassador right Uh, ambassador ras kokar rightly symbiotic said it's a yeah. symbiotic relationship and we have to actually put our house in order as ambassador ras kokar said thank you very much for watching keep subscribing our channel thank you so much